Alrighty, folks. What is going on? What is going on? Appreciate everybody for tuning in. As you guys know, give me a quick second to share this live stream on the socials, and then we'll be good to go. Let's see, let's see. I've been getting quicker with it, guys. It's not going to take me too long. Let's see, i got to post this here. I'm getting better with it. There we go, add this link. Bam, you see me? You see how quick we're getting? We are all set to go already. Less than a minute. Let's go ahead and get this one started then. What is going on everybody? This is Justin Martinez, aka Jada Sports Dude, coming to y'all live from my apartment. Hopefully you all are staying at your homes as well, practicing social distancing and staying safe during this pandemic. And I'm here to provide y'all with a little bit of extra entertainment. That's right folks, it is time for the latest series of Aggie Rewind, the series where we go back and rewatch New Mexico State's most recent games. Now, in this case, we watched the game one between New Mexico State and Cal Baptist yesterday, and then today we are watching game two between the Aggies and the Lancers. This one took place on Saturday. It was the second part of the double header for the two game series between the two schools in Eastwood High School in El Paso, Texas. It's this one where the Aggies actually got the win, 97 to 70, and it was their first Division I victory and their first WAC victory of the season. So a much needed win for this team as it tries to climb the standings in the conference, and we are here to rewatch it. And before we get into it, I just want to say thank you to NM Aggie Athletic Archive. They provide the full videos for this. And if you guys want to check out their YouTube channel, it is NM Aggie Athletic Archive. They post the full videos for New Mexico State men's basketball, women's basketball, and also football. So make sure to go show them some love because we wouldn't be able to do this without them. But guys, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to press play right here. Like I said, round two between these two squads. Cal Baptist won the first one by a score of 85 to 75 on Friday. And now we are here with this one. Wilfred Lakai actually getting the start here, as you can see, in place of Johnny McCants. Really just to get a little bit more size um, to compare against a guy like Gorjak Gak down low for Cal Baptist. He's six foot eleven, and then Johnny McCants is six foot seven. So there was too big of a gap there. They put in Wilfred Lakai at six foot nine. And uh, he gets his start. I believe that is his fourth start of the season. I believe Western New Mexico. I think he started both games against Grand Canyon, and then now this one. One of the, uh, of all the newer faces on the team, he's the one that really has gained that trust the most as of late for Coach Jans and the rest of the staff. Getting all set up here. Let's see, Aggies entered this one with a, can I get this right, 3-4 and four record? Cal State Northridge loss to, yeah, three and four record is what they're entering with this one. 0 and three in whack play. Meanwhile, Cal Baptist entering this with a nine and five record, four and three in conference play. Let's go ahead and get this one started. Ty Rowell with the basketball here. Getting it down low to Gak. That really was the game plan in game one in the early going was feed him. That's something they're gonna do again here as Gak gets the rebound. This time it is off. Going the other way now here. Jabari Rice is starting in this one. He did um, get a left heel injury in game one. About midway through the second half. He tried to play through it, but ultimately ended the game on the trainer's table. Now he said after this game that he feels he's at 70%. But that's enough for him to go ahead and play in this one. Figured it'd be hard to keep him off the court. Jabari's a real tough player. We see Donnie Tillman. Speaking of toughness, just going to work down low. He has the advantage over a guy like Reed Nottage or Trey Armstrong. Love to see that aggression. Because really, Cal Baptist is a team that showed the most, the most physicality in that first game. And that's something that really wasn't on the scouting report. You knew they had shooters. But you didn't know that they were going to be as physical as they were. But one of the things that was a focal point for this team was upping the defensive intensity. As you see, Evan Gilliard. The second draw in that charger, one of the things he does so well. Really a great defensive performance for Gilliard in this one. You take a look at the senior 
former UTEP player, was the leading scorer at UTEP, but really has rounded out his game a whole lot since getting to New Mexico State. Became more of a facilitator, and then as we just said, upping that intensity on defense. Had three steals in this contest, so he was everywhere on the floor, and he gets the ball here. 2-0 New Mexico State, 18.45 on the clock. Wilfred Lakai with the ball at the top of the arc. Gets it to Donnie Tillman. Jabari Rice, Elijah Thomas guarding him. Pump fake by Lakai. Gets it out to Tillman. Nine seconds on the shot clock here. And Clayton Henry is going to let this one fly. That one is no good. Although he did shoot pretty well in this series. From distance, he was 1 for 10 in the series against uh, Grand Canyon in both of those games combined, which is to be expected. He was coming off of a foot injury. That was his first time back out there on the court. But in this one, he shot a lot better. Let's see. Uh, 3 for 6 in game 1 and then 1 for 4 um, in game 2. So 4 for 10, not bad at all. Gorjak Gak with the bucket down low. Even with Lakai on him, um, Gak, it's still a mismatch for sure. Gak definitely has the strength over someone like Lakai and another two inches of height. But overall, the Aggies did a much better job of containing Gak in this one compared to the, the game one. Do see Rao with the basketball here, getting it to Gak down low. This is a mismatch here with Donnie Tillman guarding him. It was an interesting call to see Wolfer Lakai get the start at the five spot. Um... You would think that's to get more height, but then they put Donnie Tillman on Gak um, as opposed to Lakai on Gak, I guess just because of the strength difference. Um, but interesting decision there by Jans and the staff. We got Jabari Rice with the ball, getting it out. Speaking of which, Lakai here, that one is far left though. That's going to be Cal Baptist basketball. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Hopefully you all are doing well, having a great day. Been busy, busy. It's been uh, a lot on my plate today. We had our normal sports meeting. Um, I'm wrapping up the the podcast. Just finished the script. I got to record it after this. Um, and then our Sun U Spotlight article, which is tomorrow. It's going to be on Evan Gilliard, just highlighting everything he brings to the table, breaking down film from this season so far. Um, so that's going to be on lcsunnews.com tomorrow. As we see the lob to Gak, that's too easy. Yeah, lcsunnews.com tomorrow, I would say probably at probably at 12 o'clock, so at noon is when it'll get published, and it is going to be subscriber only, so you have to be subscribed to the paper in order to check it out, which is only $3 for the first three months, so make sure to see it. We're going to make a push, guys, to get more subscriber only content. It's something USA Today wants its papers to do. Um, doesn't mean that everything is going to be that, so like for these game articles, um, that kind of stuff is going to be just regular where you guys can check it out. Metered content is what we call it. So if you don't have a subscription, you still get, I believe it's three free uh, articles that you can check out per month. It might be three or five. Um, so that'll be the same. But there's going to be premium content to kind of just reward people that are paying for that subscription. So that'll be stuff like the Sunday Spotlight. That'll be any feature articles that we have on players. Um, which we already have put out a couple like on volleyball Jason Groves just put out one recently um, So that kind of stuff is going to be subscriber only content, but hopefully you guys do subscribe uh, Stephen M says hello all appreciate you for tuning in Stephen and then Sylvia Grijalva says Evan played great Yeah, he definitely did uh, really one of the unsung heroes in this one is you see Ty Rowell with the basket here um, You know cuz you look at guys like Jabari Rice putting up the the 20 points coming off the injury, that obviously stands out. But Evan really did it on both ends of the floor, really set the tone on defense, and then uh, just was really poised on offense. You know, in the two games, he had seven assists and two turnovers. It's a pretty good ratio. You see Johnny McCants with the offensive rebound there, going up strong, no good. Um, so, yeah, just good decision-making. He still averaged, I think it was 12 points in the two games. Um but yeah, just did a little bit of everything, for sure. So we see Gak driving. That one is no good. Good straight-up defense there by Donnie Tillman. Now, speaking of Tillman, he's got the ball here. 
and they get it out to Jabari in the corner and that one is cash money again playing through a left heel injury uh, Stephen M any updates on Kurt there's not really much to update I mean he is healthy um, but if you saw the press conference with Jans on Monday um, it appears that it's more so uh, Jans isn't happy with the way that Kerr is approaching team practices, stuff like that. Um, so it appears as if that's the reason why his minutes haven't been ramped up just yet. Um, but he is healthy. He's been dealing with that bruised tailbone. He's good to go. It's just a matter of can he get in uh, good graces with the staff. So we'll see what happens there. So we see Clayton Henry with the bucket. Nottage looking to find Gak down low. That's a good steal there by McCants. Beautiful bounce pass to Evan for the finish. Setting the tone with your defense. That's something that I was saying heading into this whole series, even the Grand Canyon series too, is that if you're struggling to score in your half-court offense, you have to create opportunities on the defensive side of the ball. Get out in transition and get those easy buckets. As we see, uh, I believe that was Rowell with the bucket. Um, yeah, that's just the easiest way to get momentum going, you know, um, to get fired up. And you can see that's what they were doing in this one. Jabari Rice with the ball here, getting it out to Gilliard on the right wing. Rolling off that screen from Johnny back to Jabari down low to Tillman. He's going to work on Gak and he's going to get rewarded with a pair of free throws here. Gak, the six foot eleven Florida grad transfer as we don't have a score there on the scoreboard 1406 um, I believe New Mexico State is up by three here up by one or three we'll see the scoreboard should come back up here oh it's tie ball game 11 to 11 1406 left in this first half and he's talking it over trying to get that first division one win of the season you see a look at Mark Carbone there Ty Rowell, plenty of shooters on this Cal Baptist team. And Jabari Rice getting that heel looked at during the break, just rewrapped. Shout out, by the way, this is, uh, I'm blanking on his last name, but this is Sean here, who's a part of the staff, and he actually just got hired by the LA Rams as a strength and training coach, I think. I might be getting the title wrong. Um, but yeah, he just got hired by the Rams. Congratulations to him. Donnie Tillman at the free throw line now. That first one is off. Looking to give the Aggies the lead here. The UNLV transfer averaging 11.4 points, 7.2 rebounds, and 2 assists per contest. Recently got back into the starting lineup. He didn't start in either of the games against Grand Canyon. Um, which was just a coaching decision, not due to any injuries. Um, it appears it's just it was kind of a similar situation to Kerr, I'm assuming. Um, but he is back in the starting lineup here. Carbone with the basketball, the New Hampshire transfer, getting it out to Raul. And what do we call here? I do have it on mute, guys, so I apologize. But it looks like, is that an offensive foul on Armstrong, I'm guessing? Yeah, I do have it on mute for those that are new to the series, um, just because I found it's very hard to get the commentator audio and my, like me talking, um, it just sounds a little bit jumbled when everything's going on at once, so I just mute it. Obviously, I'm not the best commentator. CJ Roberts driving, tries to find Clayton Henry there. That is going to be a turnover. Really one of the few mistakes by by Roberts in this series is actually a pretty good series for him in terms of decision making that's something that he has struggled with as of late was the shot selection a um, couple bad passes leading to turnovers but thought he handled that a lot better in this series that's just one of the few outliers there Armstrong with the basketball a little floater no good and that one is going to go New Mexico State's his way 12 to 11 Aggies with 13 26 left we actually have the full video for this game uh, yesterday for those who didn't watch the stream. Um, for some reason, the video started off with only like 10 minutes left in the first half. So it was a pretty short stream, but today we got the full 40. Gilliard with the basketball here, rolling off the screen from McCants. He's going to get it out to Roberts. 
back down low. That's a good matchup, but he's going to pass it up for a wide open shot by Gilliard that he cashes in on. Johnny definitely could have taken that, having a guy like Mark Carbone, Carbone on him. But the Aggies have been shooting well from distance these uh these two games here, so gives it up to Gilliard and it's an easy bucket. Another turnover by the Lancers. I believe they had 18 turnovers in this one. Let's see, 18 turnovers for Cal Baptist. Yep. That definitely was one of the main difference makers in this one. In addition to some other things, um, New Mexico State definitely handled itself in the paint a lot better. Um, they really got killed in the paint in game one. I think it was 44 points in the paint compared to 34. And then in this one, it was 50 points in the paint for New Mexico State compared to 22, I think, for Cal Baptist. So that was one of the other big uh, game changers. It was just they being a lot more physical down low, enforcing their will. That one's not from down low. That is Jabari Rice letting it fly from deep, and he hits it. Aggie's feeling it from distance to start off here. Normally something that happens with the Lancers, since they are a very good three-point shooting team. Good find there down low. Getting it out here to Johnny. Now Jabari Rice for the basketball here. William McNair in the game. He had a good pair of outings as well. This one, he had a career-high 12 points, added a block, and then some good defensive stops on guys like Gak down low. Tough take by uh, C.J. Roberts, but, man, I feel like most of the layups that we talk about with C.J., we say tough take, but it goes down. It just has great body control around the rim, able to absorb contact, acrobatic finishes. Um... Just a really skilled finisher around the rack, although they are going to call something on here, on him after the fact. I think it was the way that he threw the basketball there. Look at Jabari from the corner. Gorjok Gak back in the game here. Had 18 points on 8 for 10 shooting in game 1. Mexico State really didn't have an answer for him. Although in this one, they definitely did a much better job. Held them to, let's see what it was. I believe it was 12 points. Held them to a 13 points. 4 for 9 shooting, though. Definitely a big difference from 8 for 10 shooting. But a look at him there. A walk and double-double. 13.1 points. 10.4 rebounds. 2 assists. And I believe he entered this series with a team-high 1.8 blocks per game, too. So a good rim protector. Nice floater. And that's Raul. He's heating up already. He's the team's leading scorer entering the series. Averaging, I think it was about 15.6 points per game. Most of his shots coming from distance, but he is capable of putting it on the deck. Finishing around the rim. That nice little floater, as you can see. This is a very well-rounded score for the Lancers. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Hopefully you all are doing great. Good day so far. No complaints. Jabari Rice with the ball here, getting it to William McNair, who's now in the game to match up against a guy like Gat. A little loose with the basketball there, but it is encouraging to see that Will is actively looking to back people down. That's one of the things, really the main thing that people have um, been waiting to see out of him in order to take his game to that next level. Just being a bit more aggressive, you know. Although that one does lead to a turnover. Poked out of bounds, but this is Cal Baptist ball. Ty Rowell set to inbound. This is in Eastwood High School in El Paso, Texas, the home site for the rest of New Mexico State's games. I believe that is Elijah Thomas from distance. You can tell because it's a bit of an awkward three-point shot. There's a little bit of a hitch to his shot, but that one does go down. 20-8 to eight in favor of New Mexico State with 10.30 left in this first half. Johnny McCants, that's all day. That is too easy. And that's what you're looking for out of Johnny. 
He's going to be at a disadvantage when he's up against guys like Gorja Cat. But they did do a good job of switching up, getting some of these guards on their big men. You got to take advantage when that happens. John McCann's taking advantage there. Raul, three-point shot, no good, and that's going to be New Mexico State ball. 22-18 to with 10-13. You can just tell from the opening tip the intensity was different for New Mexico State. The bench was a lot more uh, alive, I should say. Um, really just, just feeding off of every single defensive play, every bucket. It was just a whole different team, honestly, compared to game one. And really for this whole season, this is easily the most fight that they've shown all year. Had their backs up against the wall. You don't want to go down. Uh, you don't want to be 0-4 in whack play, obviously. It becomes very hard to climb the standings. Roberts with the basketball here. Splits the defenders and gets the floater to go down. The guy can score. That's never been a problem for him. For sure. The former four-star recruit. Missouri transfer. And we got the steal here. Going the other way to Jabari. One of the three steals for Evan in this contest. Setting the tone defensively. The senior guard for the Aggies. Gak looking to go to work down low. That one is a turnaround shot that rattles in. Not a whole lot you can do. And there's a six foot eleven guy turning around with the hook shot. It's very hard to contest that. Still a six point lead for New Mexico State. A little over nine minutes left in this first half. Gets it out to, to CJ Roberts and once again touch around the rim. Shot selection much better in this series. Turnovers were down. Definitely encouraging sight for a guy that um, can have a bit, as big of a role as he wants on this team. They need that depth in the backcourt. You know, it's really going to be up for grabs between guys like him, Kalen Williams, Gerald Dokes now in the mix. This is definitely a good pair of outings for the Ranger College transfer. Elijah Thomas there. Really strong player. He's just bulldozing his way into the, uh, into the lane there. Look at Clayton Henry. Coming off of that foot injury. Also played well. Really a lot of players have a uh, good pair of outings in this one. Something they can build off of, which is good. Dillier with the basketball here. Up eight. Eight minutes and 20 seconds. We're going to get a foul on the floor here, it looks like. So they're going to inbound this one here. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Aggie's trying to bump this up to double digits. Someone with the basketball here. This is an easy matchup on Nottage. Just got to be physical with him down low. He is, and that's a bucket. That's all day. That is all day. Not much of a height advantage. Timmon only with an inch on Nottage, but the strength, without a doubt, goes in favor of the UNLV transfer. And he's talking on his way down the court. He knows that's a good matchup for him. you got to take advantage down low when you get that. Foul here on Roberts. And got a little break here. Ten-point lead for New Mexico State. 7.55 left in the first half. Now that this series is over, New Mexico State is going to be in Seattle this Friday and Saturday to face the Red Hawks. Should be a good pair of contests. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make the trip out there. Wish I could. Um, but we're going to see if maybe I can travel for, uh, you know, Dixie State out in St. George. Maybe Tarleton State out in Stephenville. We'll see what happens. Only one that's for sure is we know we're going out to the WAC tournament. We just got our credentials approved for that um, yesterday. 
So exciting stuff. Johnny driving to the rack, finds CJ Roberts. And they're going to call a foul there on Mark Carbone. Aggie's talking it over in the huddle there. Three free throws for CJ Roberts. Already the biggest lead for the Aggies all series to get that one to go down. They found themselves trailing for most of that first game um, after getting a little bit of an early lead. 4.7 points, 1.3 rebounds for Roberts so far this season. Second free throw is off. He has one more on the way. This one is up, and it is also no good. You see Gak there. It looks like he's putting on his shoe, I think, right? Yeah. Running back down the court. Armstrong with the basketball here. Not a whole lot of three-point shooting for the Lancers here. A little bit surprising. They're really trying to place an emphasis on finishing down low. There's Gak trying to do just that. He will get two free throws. Foul on Johnny McCants. Just a little bit of contact there. Gak definitely leaning in for it. Free throws for the grad transfer. Yeah, and this is just really one example of of a, a big man that's going to cause problems for New Mexico State in conference play. You saw it last weekend or the weekend prior to this with Abjord Midgard, the seven footer um, for Grand Canyon, even six foot eleven or six foot ten, uh, power forward Alessandro Lieber, Utah Valley. You got guys like Fardos Amok, who's six foot eleven. Um, Evan Cole, I think, is right around that same height as well. Um, even UTRGV Jeff O'Cherry. Six foot eleven. He's been dealing with health issues. Um, hasn't been able to stay healthy, but when he's out there, he's going to cause problems too. Pretty much all of the the main contenders, the main threats in New Mexico State in conference play, are going to have guys that are going to have advantages down low. It's going to be all up to just physicality for New Mexico State to try to make up for that lack of size, especially if they continue to roll out Johnny McCann to the five spot, which. I'd imagine they're going to have to, um, as we see Willie McNair with the block, but that's a foul. Um, I'd imagine they're going to have to just because when you look at the rest of the lineup, there's not a whole lot of room to move players around, you know. Um, like, I don't see any scenario where you're going to bench someone like Donnie Tillman in order to move Johnny up to the four, you know. Especially because there hasn't really been an, another true center that's really stepped up yet. We haven't seen really any mind curves a handful of minutes. Um, Willie McNair has made improvements, but I definitely still wouldn't start him over a guy like Donnie Tillman. So it looks like that is going to be the lineup for New Mexico State. I'd imagine would still be Johnny at the five moving forward. But we'll see. They could change it up just depending on who they face. If they do face a team like Utah Valley, maybe they roll with Wilford Lakai. Maybe mind curves production is ramped up by then. We will see. As we got Clayton Henry with the basketball here, top of the arc. Gonna get out to Gilliard a little fader on the baseline. That's gonna go Cal Baptist way. Ten point lead for the Aggies with six minutes and change left in this first half. Rowell with the basketball here. Puts it down low to Gak. McNair defending. That's all you can ask of him. Just don't get bumped around down low. Stand your ground. And go straight up. The defense there by McNair. Henry with the basketball here. Not as defending. How back out to Jabari Rice. 
Looking for something here. Six seconds on the shot clock. This is the little fader. Dirk Nowitzki-esque with the little leg sticked up. He's talking that talk. He's fired up. Tough fadeaway shot on the baseline. Jabari Rice just continues to impress. Only a redshirt junior. Still got time to improve his game even more. And this is him at 70%, according to him. This is what he said after the game. Look at that. What can you do about it? Not much. So we got, I believe that's Armstrong sent to inbound the ball here. Catch and shoot situation for Raul, I believe. That's too easy. One of the pure shooters in the whack, without a doubt. Off the dribble, catch and shoot. Guy can really do it all from anywhere on the court. So you got Donnie Tillman with the basketball here. Good find for William McNair, and that's going to be an and one. Great find by Tillman, drawing a double team, keeping his eyes up, even though he's trapped. That's an easy bucket for McNair. Nice. Knocking down Elijah Thomas, I believe, in the process. One free throw here for the redshirt sophomore. Off to a great start in this one. Trying to make it a 13-point lead for New Mexico State. That one is off, though. Cal Baptist is going to be going the other way. Gak looking for someone here on the perimeter. That one is no good by Rowell, I believe that is. Spire Rice with the basketball going the other way. Going to slow it down here. 20 on the shot clock. A little give and go to the big man. He's going to try to go to work here. That one is going to be a foul on Gak. Almost same as earlier in the game where Gak poked it loose, but that one is going to be a foul. Got a break here. Four minutes on the clock. 12 point lead for New Mexico State. Aggies in the driver's seat as they try to force a split here. After an 85 to 75 loss to the Lancers just the day prior to this on Friday. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. If you guys are enjoying this video, please leave a like. Uh, it really helps this channel grow. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on post notifications, all that good stuff. We got plenty of content coming out. Obviously, we'll be doing this throughout the rest of the season. Straight Shooter Podcast, um, posting press conferences, whether it be the weekly one for Jans or post game stuff with Jans or players. Whole lot of stuff going on. Um, we actually just had a video posted by Jason Groves as well. Uh, that one was with New Mexico State football's uh, their linebackers coach, Oliver Suckup. So we got some content other than just basketball on here as well. Plenty of reasons to subscribe. 345 on the clock here, 13 point lead for New Mexico State. Thomas getting the ball on the wing here. Trying to go to work on Tillman. Beautiful read by Tillman. The reaction time there to prevent that uh, that pass down low. Now he's trying to go to work, drawing a double team. And just like that last play, draw the double team, keep your eyes up. Keep your head up, I should say. And just find the open man, Willie McNair finishing. That's defense leading the offense, though. Starts on the defensive end for New Mexico State. Eight turnovers already for Cal Baptist here compared to New Mexico State's is three. It's a 15-point lead for the Aggies. 
Lancer's talking it over here. We'll look at the uh, Eastwood Troopers, the home site for New Mexico State for the rest of the season. And it's a good gym. It's a good gym. Um, obviously, it's not the Pan Am or just fully up to Division One standards, anyways. But you know, I think it's somewhere in between a high school gym and a Division One gym. Like it could definitely pass for a D two gym, JUCO for sure, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a pretty good setup considering all the circumstances. You know, for New Mexico State. So props to New Mexico State AD Mario Mocha. Deputy AD uh, Bron Cartwright for putting this together on short notice, being able to make this happen. Turnover here, Donnie Tillman going the other way, going to get it out to Clayton Henry. That one is off, and it's Armstrong gathering the board. 14 bench points for New Mexico State already. A lot of that is William McNair and CJ Roberts. We got Raul with the bucket down low. More than just a three-point shooter. The guy can put it on the deck as he gets that and one to drop. Lance has still got ground to make up, though. Down by 13 with 241 left in the first half. Potentially 12 if Raul can hit this. But, yeah, that bench step, definitely a big factor in this one. Roberts and McNair providing the bulk of the offense from that second unit. Speaking of Roberts, walking up the court here with 235 left in the first half. The Aggies have really been in control from the start. Uh, a rare miss around the basket for Roberts. Normally, he can finish those. That's going to be a foul. You see a look at Reed Nottage there. He had um, 19 points, game high 19 points in game one. Five for six shooting from deep, seven for eight from the floor, I believe. Another one of those lethal shooters from distance. 15 and a half points on the season, five and a half rebounds, 2.6 assists. And he entered the series shooting right at around, I think it was 46% from distance. Lethal without a doubt. Alex M, appreciate you for tuning in, man, and chiming in. So CBU has a good offense, but this is their second 27-point loss in whack play. Um, yeah, they've they've had a couple games where where the offense doesn't show up, but you know when they get going, they're definitely dangerous. Um, really, the thing which we've been talking about the whole stream and even yesterday too was just matching that physicality. Because um, at the end of the day, New Mexico State has more strength than a team like Cal Baptist. And uh, once they did that, and once they brought up that defensive intensity, really made life difficult for the Lancers on offense. You see Armstrong, Armstrong shooting it from distance, no good. Getting it out to McNair at the top of the arc. Spar with ball here. They're taking this one a little bit slow. 13 on the shot clock. Rolling off the screen from Tillman. Jabari, Clayton in the corner. Good find to McNair. And yet another finish around the rim for the big man. Taking advantage of the opportunities he's getting here. Career high 12 points for him in this one. In addition to a couple of really good defensive plays. He had a block. Just some good clean contests on guys like Gak down low. Rice going the other way here. Clayton thought about it, getting it out to Jabari instead. I was going to rattle off the rim and out. See, I looked down on this one. I was drinking this water when that play happened. There you go, got the replay. So 
bar he's hitting the deck. And they're going to say that that is New Mexico State ball, I believe. I do have it on mute, guys. I apologize. Sometimes I'm going to be a little bit lost with what's going on. There's a look at the redshirt junior playing through a left heel injury in this one. Really didn't participate in shoot around a whole lot. Um, I don't know what those things are called, but he had that kind of like styrofoam cylinder type thing that you put on your back and you kind of just like roll to stretch out your back more. Um, I don't know what it's called, but that's pretty much all he was doing before this game. He got a couple shots up with like a few minutes left in the shoot around, but primarily just stretching before the game started. You figured he was still going to play, though, um, you know, with him being as fierce of a competitor as he is. Yeah, he did get the start in this one per usual and played really well. Game high 20 points in this one, in addition to some good defensive plays. Aggie's in the bonus here, so that's what it was. It's going to be free throws for Jabari. 42 to 30, just under a minute left in this first half. Free throw is on its way, up and good. Thirteen and eight, thirteen point eight points, five point two rebounds, and one point eight assists. Per game so far for the preseason WAC player of the year. Doesn't look like he'll end up winning the WAC player of the year award. Um, just because you know, New Mexico State's record isn't going to be as good as we thought it might be at the beginning of the season. Also guys like you know Midgard have really stepped up at Grand Canyon, Fardos, Amok, and Utah Valley. But um, still, without a doubt, you can see the three points out there. Definitely one of the better players in the conference, no doubt about it. So got the deep shot there just to get that two-for-one opportunity. That's why you saw the quick release there. So there's a couple second difference on the uh, shot clock. See, Ra with the basketball here. Goes up, tough finish around the rim, man. But here's that two-for-one opportunity. There's more time on the clock. Getting it out to Gilliard. Yes, sir. At the buzzer. <sighs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. What's even more crazy is that I think that's his third buzzer beater of the season so far. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know for sure he had he had one against Benedict and Mesa. Um, I don't know if there might have been. No, there wasn't any second left. Yeah, it was definitely a buzzer beater going into halftime. Um... Western New Mexico, he did the same thing, buzzer beater, and then now in this one going into halftime. So that's three for for Evan Gilliard on the season. Um, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm trying to think of. I'm pretty sure at most anyone last year only had like one. Like obviously Jabari had his against Utah Valley, even though there's still like point six seconds left. Um. There's not a whole lot of other ones I can think of from last season. So for him to already have three, that's pretty pretty crazy. But this team was already rolling heading into the first half, and that only gives them even more momentum. New Mexico State up big as it looks to avoid getting swept. And it looks to get its first Division One and WAC win of the season. Here at Eastwood High School in El Paso, Texas, Home site for the Aggies. 52-34 in favor of New Mexico State. Definitely can't take your foot off the gas against a team like Cal Baptist, though. You know, they entered this series averaging the most points per game in the WAC. I think it was 83.5 points per game. So, high-powered offense. But a great start for New Mexico State. You definitely got to do it for the full 40 minutes against a team like Cal Baptist. So up by 16 here. Dillard with the basketball. Starting off the second half. He's going to get into the lane. Take the contact, no problem. 
bit of a breakdown there for Cal Baptist. Um, sort of sleepwalking there, but on the first play of the of the second half, not a good sign. So we see Raul with the basketball here, getting it out to Thomas. He's going to get the foul there on McNair. So McNair getting the start here in the second half. It was Wilfred Lakai getting the start for the game. But McNair is the one that has really played well so far. Still looking to go with a little bit more size than a guy like Johnny McCants. Just to match up with Gorjak Gak. Thomas with a free throw. That one is off. Still an 18-point lead for New Mexico State. The St. Mary's transfer, Elijah Thomas. I believe a grad transfer? I believe so. Either that or a senior. I think it's grad transfer. Um, one of the better finishers around the rim. Obviously, very strong player. Hard to stop when he gets a full head of steam. And capable of knocking down that three-point shot as well. Not as much as a guy like Nottage or Raul or Armstrong, but capable of knocking it down. Which is fine. They're not short on, on guys that can shoot, you know. Speaking of guys that can shoot, Jabari Rice feeling it from distance. That's what, number four for him, I think, in this game. Again, dealing with that heel injury, but it doesn't look to be slowing him down at all. He was saying after the game, really the only ways it was affecting him was just his explosiveness when it came to crashing the glass. He wasn't able to, to get up there as much. But obviously it didn't affect the shot at all. He was still hitting his shots. 20-point lead for New Mexico State with 18.49 left in this one. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. As always, if you guys are enjoying this, please give a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Helps this, uh, this channel grow. Which it has been doing, you know, the subscriber count isn't really going up, which is fine because, you know, it's a set number of, of people here in, in town mostly that are, that are following uh, New Mexico State Athletics and stuff. We're not expecting the subscriber count to skyrocket, but the views have been really good. Um, the views have been really good, especially for stuff like straight shooter, um, the straight shooter offseason web series that I was doing. Um, great responses from you guys on it, so I appreciate all of that. We got Gorjok Gak with the ball here. And we got a foul on the floor. Now a timeout. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a shove there on McNair. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Cal Baptist runs the exact same inbound play, even though they kind of you know, showed their hand a little bit. We got Gilliard drawing the foul there. Uh, one second, guys. Just responding to something from my uh, editor. Making sure we got everything set up for print paper tomorrow. Uh, Jabari Rice for the basketball here. 20 point lead for New Mexico State. Getting it down low to Ill Will McNair. Banging down low, but that is going to be a travel. Second turnover for the redshirt sophomore. Out of Philadelphia. Big Philly Willie out of Philadelphia. Or the nickname he rolls with is Ill Will McNair. That's the one that he seems to like the most. 20 point lead for New Mexico State. 1741 left in this contest. Aggies heading out to Seattle after this. Which is going to be interesting. We're not sure. I don't know why Riley Grigsby wasn't playing for Seattle in its most recent series against uh, Dixie State, I believe. To see the and one there by Thomas. Not much Jabari can do there. Um, 
Not sure why Grigsby wasn't playing. He is their, their leading scorer, at least he was heading into that series. I think it's Darian Tremel now is leading them in points per game. Um, but definitely Grigsby, one of the most impactful players for that team. And he did not play in either of those games last weekend. So we'll see if he is able to play against the Aggies. If not, you got to imagine the main focus is just going to be stopping a guy like Tremel. Um, Aaron Nettles is also a pretty good guard in their backcourt. Um, Grigsby would definitely be a game changer if they can get him. So we'll see what happens with that. I've been trying to find just info on it. Uh, maybe if one of you guys can find it, feel free to comment. But not a whole lot out there in terms of Seattle Redhawks uh, coverage. So we'll just have to see what happens this weekend. Gilly with the basketball here. Trying to shake Gak there on the perimeter. Now he gets it here on the right wing. Looking for Jabari. Another one, not this time. We do have a foul on Nottage, I guess it is. New Mexico State in the driver's seat. Really have been from the get-go here. Tillman looking for the ball here. And when he gets that matchup with Nottage down low, he's attacking every time. You know it's coming. I believe that's the third bucket that he's gotten on Nodditch down low. The physicality, the aggressiveness by New Mexico State really kicked it up a notch. As we see Raul, what is this here? Uh, did he get hit in the face or in the eye or something? Oh, yeah. Unintentional there by Gilliard, but... Definitely a little bit of a slap there. Maybe he got his eye or something. The ref is getting near full here. He says, let me get my mask on first at least, guy. They're going to look this over. We got a quick uh, break here. Steven M got poked in the eye. Yeah, it looks like it. We got a break as we get another look at this one. Yeah, I mean, nothing intentional. But, I mean, definitely contact, you know. There's a look at Raul, the leading scorer for Cal Baptist. Off to a good start in this one as well. But, uh... Lance has still got a way to go. Down by 19. 16.37 left. Let's see. I am going to turn it on for this. I want to hear what they're saying. Three. It appears his eyes better. He came out of the huddle with CBU and appeared to be okay. The officials are discussing what each of them saw. There's no question he poked him in the eye. I just don't know how much. Oh, that's the thumb. It was the thumb. It's always interesting, too. I always look at the coaches' reactions and you kind of figure out who got the better end of it. And it turns. Okay. Yeah. Um, don't know why there needed to be too much of a of a stop there, of a break. Pretty clear, just hitting the eye, inbound, and let's move on. 19-point lead for New Mexico State. 16-33 left in this contest. Gak with the ball at the top of the arc. Finds Nottage, catch and shoot. No good. Normally that was all money in game one. He was 5 for 6 from distance. New Mexico State doing a much better job of containing him this time around. Um, let's see. 0 for 3 from distance for Nottage in this one. Compared to 5 for 6 last time. Although really it was Raul that was doing most of the damage on Saturday. So we see McCants trying to finish down low, but that one is no good. T 
Thomas finishing on the other end. Still something that McCants is working on is being a little bit more switchable to where he can guard people out there on the perimeter. You know, last season that was one of his things where if he gets switched up against a smaller guy, a lot of the times he got burned on the perimeter. Speaking of getting burned on the perimeter, Clayton Henry with the torch from distance. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things that the McCants is definitely trying to improve on is his perimeter defense. His lateral quickness, you know, the footwork at the three-point line. Just a blow-by there for Thomas. We got Tillman drawing the charge. Good play there. Gilliard is fired up. Whole bench is fired up. Uh, Stephen M, will M14 start? I don't see it happening. Not this season. Um... I, I just don't, you know, as exciting of a prospect as he is, which he, he definitely is, you know, freak athlete. Um, I just, I don't see him overtaking a guy like Clayton Henry, who has proven to be trustworthy, um, who has proven to be one of the more impactful players. Even though it doesn't, it doesn't always show up on the box uh, score, you know, he's somebody that, that impacts the game on both ends of the floor. To me, is their best defender on the team, so... Um, That'd be somebody he's competing with. Definitely not going to overtake a guy like Jabari at the two spot. So, no, I don't see Marcus Watson starting this season. And we'll see next season because, you know, players get that extra year of eligibility. They can come back. Um, we're not sure what it's going to look like. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going to take a little while. You know, I think they're definitely going to gradually ramp up Watson's uh, minutes because, again, as exciting as he was, that was his first time playing college basketball you know he didn't play at Oklahoma State he hadn't played a game in two years you know it's going to take a little bit of time um, so I think it's going to be more of a process and sort of just instant impact for the guy but geared with the basketball here 20 point lead for New Mexico State 15-15 left in this contest going to get to Tillman there and that's going to be a clean block by Gak Good hustle there by Roberts. Stays with Cal Baptist, but that's good hustle there to slow down that fast break. That's when the Lances are dangerous is when they get out on the run. So good effort there to, to put a stop to that. Rile with the basketball here, rolling off the screen from Gak. Oh, really, a, a blown finish there by Thomas. Normally, he will convert on those. Gilliard thought about it. He's going to take it to the rack instead. Swinging it out. Now we got Johnny finding Clayton. An extra pass. Plenty of ball movement for the Aggies, although it doesn't end up or doesn't result in the bucket. New Mexico State swinging the ball around. Stephen M., have you heard of any... Of senior, I guess any senior say that will return next year. No, they're gonna. That's gonna be something that we'll find out at the end of the season. Um, you know, and Jan just said it too that he's not even really talking to the players about it. Um, it's just gonna be up to them at the end of the year. So, uh, as much as we'd love to know right now, it's it's gonna be something we're gonna have to wait to find out. So we see Thomas knocking it down from the corner. Capable of hitting that shot. Oh, it's not his specialty. 17-point lead for New Mexico State. Still in control here, but a lot of time left on the clock. Roberts thought about it there. Now he's going to take it to the hole. And throws it away. Thomas going the other way. Good stop there. Let's see, is that Johnny down low? Is that Johnny scrapping? I believe it is. Alex M, lots of people started to compare Watson to Wendell after the game. Um, he's an exciting prospect, for sure. I really wanted to make him the focus of the uh, the Sun U spotlight for this week, but there's just not enough plays that I could use. I kind of like to, to break down at least six plays, or like five to six. So there's not enough just yet, but he's an exciting prospect, man. Um, I 
definitely one of the highest ceilings out of anyone on the team. You could argue the highest ceiling since he's only a redshirt freshman. So we see a nasty step back there by Raul. Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what he does moving forward. But, you know, it is going to be uh, tough for him to carve out that role. They're not just going to hand it to him. So we'll see just how much he can gain that trust of Jans and the rest of the staff uh, moving forward. So you see Tillman with the basketball here, getting it out to Roberts. Jabari down low. He had that little fader earlier in the half, but this time going to do a leaner, and that one's going to go down. Craftiness from the redshirt junior out of Houston, Texas. Wanted the foul there. I don't think there was there was any foul to be called, but a tough finish. Uh, Stephen M., have you seen the Sean White's highlights from this season? Aggie got a good one in him. As we see uh, Gillard with the bucket. Yeah, um, I did a little bit of a film breakdown on Ashan. I wouldn't call it a breakdown, but I posted some of his highlights um, when he did commit. He looks good. My only thing is just that, and I, I've said it before, is that at six foot seven, at that power forward spot, I think especially on New Mexico State, they look for those sort of in-betweeners to be able to expand their range. Uh, provide a little bit more spacing and as Sean is primarily a rim runner you know he's going to throw down some crazy dunks he's a freak athlete without a doubt um, but not much not much of a game outside of the painted area so that's what I'm looking for him to improve on even if it's just like a mid-range shot something like that you know like CJ Bobbitt last season wasn't the most wasn't a knockdown shooter from deep but he was at least able to step out force you to respect that and provide some spacing for the team um and so I'm looking for Rashawn to develop that a little bit more. Um, but without a doubt, the dude is an athlete for sure. Throws down some crazy dunks. So I'm interested in seeing what his fit is going to be like on the team. So we got a break here. CBM, 6'7", 220 pounds. Yeah, so power forward type. Um, you know, you wonder how much bully ball can you really play. Um at the D1 level at six foot seven, even though he is a very strong player. Um, but that's mostly what he leans on at, at the JUCO level, and I just don't know how much that's going to transfer. So I think definitely being able to uh, to expand his range is going to be really big for him moving forward. So you got Ty Rowell with the basketball here. But the Aggies got some athletes coming in. Karan Oliver out of Phoenix Prep. He's been looking really good. He's been tagging me in a lot of his uh, his highlights and stuff like that. And you guys can see that on Twitter. Um, I think I just retweeted one like the other day. So it's at Jay the Sports City if you guys want to check it out. But um, he's a freak athlete, good two way player. Um, I believe at six foot three, six foot four, he is. So like at the shooting guard position, they're bringing in some athletes for sure, for sure. Gerald Dokes, the most recent guy to come in who's on the team right now, but he's another guy who can get up there. Great elevation on his shot, which is one of the things that uh, Jans likes the most in him because you don't see that a whole lot in um, just in players in general nowadays. You don't see them get that kind of lift anymore on their shots, and Dokes is able to do that, which makes up for him not being the tallest guy on the floor. He's able to hit some pretty impressive shots even when there's a hand in his face. So plenty of athletes. Um joining the team 16 point lead for New Mexico State 11-17 left in this one Aggies looking for the first D1 win of the season first whack win of the season McNair going to work down low that one is no good and that is Armstrong with the rebound he's going to take it the other way shot is off Gak with the rebound Good job by Johnny there to stand his ground. No good by Nottage. Really just looked a little bit off in this one. He was feeling it in that game against uh or game one on Friday. Not so much on Saturday. Jabari Rice finding McNair to touch. The soft touch from the big man. Normally gonna throw it down, but a little bit of finesse from the redshirt sophomore. 
Three point shot by Raul. How much you can do, man. Great shooter from distance. Good at putting the ball on the deck. He just does it all for this team. And a great facilitator. I was talking about that yesterday. But his assist to turnover ratio, I think, was at around like 2.6 or something like that entering the series. It's a really sound basketball player. You see a look at the gym there. Eastwood High School in El Paso, Texas. The Troopers of Eastwood. They have me pretty much sitting up where uh, where this camera is shooting from. So in that upper deck. Not a bad setup. Um, fortunately, the guy who shoots the uh, shoots photos for us, Nathan Fish, which you can see actually he's right here shooting this. Um, he's really big into camping, and so he has this, uh, I don't know what it's called, I'm not a camper, um, but it's like a little foldable table that you can pull out, I guess, that people buy for camping. Um, but yeah, he brought that over here for me, so I was sitting in like just one of the regular chairs in the stands, and I had that next to me, and my laptop and everything. So, it was a good setup, you know, no complaints. Just a little bit weird being in a gym that's has no fans in it, you know, they blast the music, I'll tell you that much, they were blasting the music at this series, uh, these two games, just I guess to make up for the fact that there weren't any fans there, um, but when it's not playing, you know, you can hear the sneakers squeaking, you can hear the players talking and all that stuff, which is cool, but it's just, it's just different, you know, it took a little bit of adjusting, because Grand Canyon, which I was just at the weekend before this, had 900 students there, so it felt just like a regular full gym, honestly, with the way they were uh, they were cheering. So this was definitely a big uh, <laughs> a big difference from that. But 15 point lead for New Mexico State. Time running out for the Lancers to make a move here. If you're Johnny, you got to go at this. Just a little indecisive from him. You got Ty Rowell on you, but I think it's six foot two. You gotta just you can't hesitate to go at him. So you see the emphatic block by McNair. Good stuff from the big man. Definitely would be big for New Mexico State if they could get him to play at this sort of level moving forward. Because they need guys to step up at the five spot, you know, especially when you're going to have these matchups like against Cal Baptist, Grand Canyon, Utah Valley, UTRGV, when there are some of these bigger centers, um, Johnny's only, only going to be able to do so much. You know, you're going to need guys like Mayan to come in and do his thing. So you see CJ Roberts at the layup. Yeah, you're going to need guys like, like McNair to come in and, and uh, be productive. Mayan Kerr, hopefully he can start to ramp up his pr uh, production, provide some valuable PT. It's definitely going to have to be by committee at that five spot when you're going up against guys that are 6 foot 11, 7 foot, stuff like that. McNair, he's going to try it from distance and knock it down. First three-point shot of his career. He hits a couple every now and then in shoot-around before the game. I think he did, actually, in this shoot-around. But, hey, up 18 points. Feeling himself a little bit after that block. Let's just go ahead and go for it. Let it fly, and he knocks it down. Yes, sir. <laughs> Showing off the the wrist there. Good stuff from McNair. Yeah, he's celebrating. He's hyped. As we got to look at Ty Rowell there. Really was shouldering the load in this game here. Let's see, how many points did he finish with? Uh, 22. 22 in this one. On 9 for 14 shooting. Just didn't get a whole lot of other guys contributing, unfortunately. Free throws up on this one. That one is good. We got an 18-point lead. 
or New Mexico State. Cal Baptist is already in the bonus, though. Seven fouls for New Mexico State, so that's not good. Oh, look at that. Going to work, although he misses the layup. You know he wanted that one. Good move there to shake his defender. And look at this. Evan Gilliard going the other way. Finding Tillman and one. <laughs> A little headbutt from... Till when the ref has to say, are you good, buddy? <laughs> Chill out just a little bit. Um, but Gilliard, man, just starting on the defensive end, leading the way. Definitely got to give credit where credit's due. Um, really has improved his defense. Has improved his facilitating. Still is a score, a good score. But it's just rounded out his game since transferring from UTEP. Where really when he was there, it was just, he was the bucket. You know, he was the guy you get the ball to. Um, but now he's become just one of those Swiss Army knives, honestly. But a good reaction. Going the other way. Nice pass. <laughs> and then headbutt. <laughs> Nathan, our photographer, was right there, right in front of him. I'm sure he was like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> well, he's literally right in front of Nathan there. <laughs> Tillman is an interesting guy, man. He's a character, for sure. He is a character. If you guys want to see, uh, you see Marcus Watson checking in. Um, I did an interview with Donnie uh, this off season. Just breaking down like some of his highlights from previous days at UNLV and Utah and all that. Uh, it's jokes. He's funny. <laughs> he's 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 an interesting guy. Always a good interview. So if you guys want to check that out, have a good laugh. And also just some good film breakdown and stuff like that. You can check that out. It's here on our channel. Just look up uh, Stray Shooter, Donnie Tillman. You should find it. 21-point lead for New Mexico State. With 7.50 left. It's looking like the Aggies are going to get their first D1 win of the season. A much needed win in whack play. Because they were starting to fall behind just a bit there. 0-3, bottom of the standings. Weird to see the Aggies at the bottom of the standings. I think uh, Sean Buchanan, former Aggie from last season, uh, retweeted like that photo of the standings. and was like, this just doesn't look right. <laughs> He's like, this just looks weird or something like that. Still time, though. You know, still time. It's going to be hard to catch up to probably Grand Canyon because they are um, still undefeated at 4-0. Um, UTRGV is still undefeated, but at 2-0. So, you know, it's going to be hard for them. I don't see them really getting the one seed, I don't think. But um, they could definitely still get second, third seed, something like that. If they start to pick it up, you know, we'll see if they can really build off this win and get a low run going, which honestly I think they will. Um, it's a winnable series against uh, Seattle that they got coming up after that. What do they have after that? Um, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. <laughs> Let's see. Seattle and then Utah Valley. That's going to be tough. But, you know, Tarleton stayed after that. Dixie stayed after that. Winnable games for sure. Utah Valley is going to be tough, though. Do you see that one just slipping out of uh, McCants' hands? I'm interested in seeing that series between Grand Canyon and uh, Utah Valley, though. Because as good as Grand Canyon looks, it's not that far. They're not that far off from Utah Valley. I think Utah Valley is is going to be just as much of a threat as Grand Canyon. If you see Carbone letting it fly, cashing in. High arcing shot over Jabari Rice there. They're still shooting. They're going to keep shooting. They got ground to make up. 16 point lead for New Mexico State. 640 left in this one. Gilliard going to work on Gat, kicking it out to Tillman. That one's no good. Johnny, and that's that's just unnecessary. They're gonna say that's them boxing out, you know. 
when you're backing up that much, you know you're taking away his landing spot. You know you're cutting off his feet. To me, that's a dirty play. Um, I don't know if they call anything on this. I know they reviewed it. I think they did. They did call a flagrant on this, which they definitely should have. I mean, yeah. When you're backing up that much, you know you're not going to give him a chance to land. And that's dangerous, man. Luckily, he's fine. But that's that's so dangerous. Oof. Luckily, he was able to kind of break his fall a little bit with his hand there, but could have been a lot worse. So, glad McCants is fine there. They're going to get a flagrant called on Carbone. Looks like Johnny's good, though. Jan's talking it over with the team. Lancer's talking it over. We're reaching the back end of this live stream here. Once this is over, we'll look over the final stats. We'll read off quotes that we got um, from our interviews. We got to talk to Jans after the game and Jabari Rice after the game. So we'll read off some quotes from them. I think it's only one from each of them. Um, but if you guys do want to see the full press conference um, for both of them, it is here on our YouTube channel. Um, all of the post-game press conferences for New Mexico State, they get posted on this channel here, along with Jans' weekly post uh, press conference on Monday. So if you guys want to check those out, um, there's playlists. Everything's broken up into playlists here on the channel. So New Mexico State presser, uh, pressers is the one where you can find all the, the press conferences. Yeah, this is going to be a flagrant on Carbone. This is going to be free throws here now. Uh, Alex M., I think the UVU series will be a good one with NMSU having a couple more games under their belt. Yeah, it's a good thing that they do have a little bit more time because um, UVU is a good team, man. And it's not just their big men. You know, like Trey Woodbury is one of the better shooters in the conference. Um he provides some really much-needed three-point shooting because the team doesn't do a whole lot of it. But uh, he's one of those guys that does um, provide some spacing. You know, they got Jamison Overton, who has been um, at times a leading scorer in the WAC. I don't know if he still is anymore. But he's averaging around, like, 18 points per game, something like that. Really good finisher around the rim. They got guys, man. Evan Cole, that depth at the five spot. They got multiple guys at that five spot that are going to cause problems for New Mexico State. We see Watson with a three-point shot, no good. McCants, the offensive board, yeah, he looks just fine finishing that one. Yeah, it's going to be a good series, but, um, you know, I think once you reach that point, they're going to be, what, six games, seven games into, um, or seven games out of their pause, I should say. So, you know, rust isn't going to be an excuse at that point anymore. Um, we'll get a pretty good indication of just where New Mexico State stands in the conference once we see that series. So we got a 19-point lead. Carbone thought about it there. He's going to let it fly. No good. Jabari with the rebound and the save. And Gilliard is going to go the other way. Watson looking for an opportunity here. Looking for his first bucket. His first collegiate bucket, I believe. I don't think he's gotten it yet. Sean McCants, no good. This is it right here. Okay. Yep. Offensive rebound. Back up strong. Really nothing Raul can do there. First bucket for the Oklahoma State transfer. Former four-star recruits. Six foot six redshirt freshman. And he says, I want to walk this one up the court here. Gets pretty low to the ground when he's dribbling, too. I've noticed that. Makes it a little bit tougher to strip the ball away. He gets a three-point shot here. Not really his uh, his forte. He's more of a guy, kind of similar to Elijah Thomas, honestly. Um, I think that's a pretty good comparison, is that he's going to be a guy that 
He's going to get a full head of steam, heading towards the rim, and just use his strength. Speaking of strength, Donnie Tillman. Tough. Tough. Just going to work on Nottage the whole night. Anytime he gets that matchup, he really just went all out for it. Um, but yeah, he's going to be a little bit similar to Elijah Thomas where he's going to be an aggressor, driving towards the rim, absorbing contact really well. Freak athlete, as you see Jans coaching up the freshman there. Looking forward to seeing what, uh, what Watson does moving forward, for sure. I know Aggie fans are plenty excited about him, you know, as they should be. So you got Gilliard with the free throws here. That one is off. 446 left in this contest. 23 point lead for New Mexico State. You know, they needed a win by any means by any means necessary in this one. But to get it in this fashion, um, definitely is going to help them with their just momentum moving forward. You know, even just talking to Jans and Jabari after the game, um, you could just see, like, almost like a weight off their shoulders, you know, a little bit of relief. Like, they still got a ways to go, you know, don't get me wrong. They still got to climb the standings. But just to get that monkey off their back of not having that Division One win, that conference win yet, um, you could just tell. Like almost like they were just exhaling a little bit, you know. Like okay, we can we can build off this moving forward, you know. That first one was just the hardest one to get, so hopefully they will build off of this moving forward. Eighty-two to fifty-eight, New Mexico State. Four twenty-five left. Gilliard walking the ball up the court here, getting it to Watson now to Tillman. You know he's looking for this matchup, but they're. Cal Baptist is smart now. They're bringing a double team. Dokes. There's that elevation on that shot that we're talking about. Even though it doesn't go down. And we got a foul here as Watson was going for the, uh, the offensive rebound. Hard worker on the glass. That's another one of the impressive things about him. Oh, no, no. I forgot. He faked me out, too. Yeah, the bench was laughing at him here. He thought that he had free throws coming up, but it was free throws the other way. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Dang, he faked me out, too. <laughs> but, yeah, he lined up at the free throw line, and I, I forget who it was. I think it was C.J. Roberts or Kalen Williams. One of them was like, this guy thinks he's shooting free throws right now. And you can hear it, like, because it's obviously no fans in the gym. So I could hear that from the bleachers, and they were just laughing at him. A little freshman, uh, freshman teasing, but that's funny. Uh, Gilliard with the basketball here. Really, it's felt like Gilliard's been on the court the whole game. We see Watson going to work, getting his own rebound. That second jump, his ability to to get back up so quickly, you know, misses the shot, and then is just right there to get his own rebound. You know, obviously it's not at that level, but it reminds you a little bit of like a Zion Williamson where as soon as he misses, he's right there to try to get his own rebound, you know. Just crashes the glass so quickly. Obviously that's a bit of an exaggeration because Zion is a whole other level of just generational talent and all that, but you guys get what I mean. So you got an 84 to 59 lead for New Mexico State. 320 in this one. Aggies are rolling. Rolling to the victory. As we see Mayan Kerr now in the game. Still needing to to get on the uh, on the right foot with Coach Jans and the staff from what it sounds like. So just some garbage time PT right now, but he's going to be one of those impactful guys for sure. Um, if he is able to to do that and and uh, earn some more playing time, you know, six foot nine, but he's a real strong player down low. Plays a lot bigger than six foot nine. If you look at him right there, you know, um, 
to me, is the best true center on the team. Just because Johnny is obviously a four that converted to a five and haven't seen it consistently enough from Mc, from McNair. But Mayan looks to be like he can be the best true center on the team. And it does seem like discipline is the uh, the issue with him. So you got Tillman with the basketball here. Carbone on him. Three points shy. Now they're just messing around with him. Yep. Tillman doesn't normally shoot a shot like that, but they're feeling it. They're feeling themselves. 26-point lead. Alex M, as long as he doesn't break his shoes, LOL, and Sylvia with the laughing face. Yep. 26-point lead, 240. It is all laughs for New Mexico State right now. Tillman looks like he is checking out. And the Fizz now you saw Clayton Henry there. I mean, you just, you just feel a different energy from the team, you know. What you would expect, you know, they're finally getting that win that they've been looking for. So you see Lakai, good strip, and oh no. Oh no. Filthy. The windmill dunk by Marcus Watson. That's actually the uh, cover photo, I think, for the, I think it's the thumbnail for this live stream. But uh, shout out to, to Nathan Fish, our photographer, for getting that photo. He was right there, so good spot. Um, he actually shot the the image, but like had a really high frame rate, so we put it all together to make this like GIF, pretty much, um, of him doing this windmill dunk. So if you guys want to see that, that was really cool. I think I retweeted it, but go ahead and check it out on his actual Twitter, which is at photo j fish. Um, make sure to check that out because he does great work. And yeah, that was one of the cooler ones that he posted from this game was that. That little video from all the photos put together of that windmill. Mayan Kerr with the basketball down low. Looking to get his first bucket as an Aggie, but he's going to draw that foul. Yeah, that Zion incident breaking his shoes was crazy. I remember the, uh, like, I remember even the stock went down for Nike when that happened, which is ridiculous. Um, I'm sure it recovered pretty quickly, but I remember it went down when that happened. Um, I forget what shoes he was wearing. I want to say they were Paul George's, but yeah, that was pretty crazy. You've seen that before, though, like, because uh, um, I grew up a Spurs fan, or my whole family's Spurs fans in San Antonio, because um, that's where they live. Um, but I remember that happened with Monty Ginobili, too, where he busted out of, like, the side of his foot. Pretty crazy. 30-point lead for New Mexico State. Cruising to the victory here over Cal Baptist to force that sweep. So we got a foul on Kerr. Sawyer going to the line. One twenty-one left in this one. Pretty interesting uh, lineup that New Mexico State has right now out on the court it's a lot of the uh, obviously it's garbage time but like it's a lot of the young guys that Aggie fans are really excited about you know you got Gerald Dokes out there right now uh, Marcus Watson Mayan Kerr all that whoa okay <laughs> that was just a part of the video um, I don't know why that happened that's just a part of the video um, it's not the Wi-Fi this time I know I had problems last week <laughs> with it lagging a bit but I think that was just part of the video um, but yeah, a lot of the guys that people are excited about, you know, Marcus Watson, Gerald Oaks, Mayan Kerr, you got Wolf Lakai out there, Kalen Williams. There's that lift on the jumper that we were talking about with Dokes being able to elevate. Yeah, if they, if this team manages to, you know, not go on pause anymore to not have any of these games get postponed or canceled anymore. Like, they can really get some momentum going. There's a lot of reason to be excited. They definitely still have the best roster in the WAC, I feel. I mean, like, this is just a garbage time lineup here. And, like, look at all the potential on this team, man. You got two former four-star recruits in Watson and Kerr. Dokes is a three-star, or he was um, at one point in high school. You know? Just a whole lot of potential on this team. Um, 
just going to be a matter of staying on the court, you know, being able to really get some momentum going. Free throw there by Sawyer, 93-66 to in favor of New Mexico State. Speaking of talent, Tennessee Owens checking into the game, the Las Cruces native. I believe, I, was that Bryce that checked in too? Yeah, we got Bryce in there too, no? Let me see. Yeah, we got Bryce in there. And two Las Cruces natives. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, what we're going to do again, or we're going to try to set up again, is uh, for the WAC tournament preview episode for Straight Shooter, well, uh, I'm going to try to get Bryce in Tennessee to, to host that entire episode with me. For those who follow the Straight Shooter podcast, we did that last season. It was like a, oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my goodness. I honestly only saw like him getting fouled on that three-point shot in real time when I was out there covering the game. Because I was like already trying to finish up the article, get it written up. I didn't know he crossed over that guy beforehand. Look at, oh my. Oh man. That's ridiculous. That's that that's that being low to the ground with that crossover that we're talking about. You know, it's so hard to, to strip the ball away from him when you do that. Jeez, that was filthy though. <laughs> I didn't see that whole film, I mean that whole clip. Um, because yeah, I was I was trying to wrap up this article. You know, my deadlines are five minutes after the game's over, so Right around now, you obviously know New Mexico State's won, so I'm I'm just trying to get it all finished. Dokes with the ball here. He's going to run this one out, get it out to Kerr. And that's the ball game, folks. 97-70, to 70, New Mexico State getting the win, improving the 4-4 four and four on the season. 1-3 um, and three in whack play. Still a ways to go. You know, still got to climb those standings, but... That first one, that first win is the toughest to get. So, encouraging sign for New Mexico State. We're going to take a look at these final stats here, followed by quotes from the team before we get out of here. Uh, for New Mexico State, team high 20 points, um, three assists, I'm sorry, three rebounds, two assists for Jabari Rice, 19 points and four boards for Donnie Tillman, and then a career-high 12 points for William McNair. So great performance out of him off the bench. Let's look at the shooting splits. It was 37 for 62 for New Mexico State. That's 59.7% from the floor. And then 10 for 25 from distance, which is 40%. And 13 for 20 from the free throw line, 65%. Um, offense on point. you know, But defensively, I think, is where they really uh, generated most of their momentum. You know, they had 18 fast break points, 23 points off of turnovers. That's definitely what uh, really got them going. A look at Cal Baptist. Game high 22 points for Ty Rowell, or Rowell to go along with five assists, although six turnovers. They did a really good job of uh, forcing mistakes, New Mexico State did. And then 14 points for Elijah Thomas, 13 points for Gorjak Gak on four for nine shooting. Reed Nottage, only four points on 0 for four shooting after having a game-high 19 points in Game 1. So they did a much better job of containing him. 22 for 47 from the floor for Cal Baptist. That's 46.8%. 6 for 12 from distance. That's 50%. And then 20 for 25 from the charity stripe. That's 80%. Um, yeah, New Mexico State did a great job of running them off the three-point line. You know, only 12 attempts for Cal Baptist is pretty crazy. Um, I don't remember the exact percentage, but I want to say they were like, 20 something in the country in terms of a uh, like percentage of their points coming from the three point line. So they really lean on that on that three point line, that three point shooting, but uh New Mexico State did a good job of running them off the perimeter there. But let's go in and take a look at our quotes from this one. See what the team had to say. We didn't have a whole lot. Uh I think it was just one quote from each person here. So here's coach Jans talking about the win. He says, "Quote I'm really happy for our players. It's been a while. It's been way too long for them to have that winning feeling in the locker room. I'm excited for them. I felt like this game was pivotal for us going forward. Um, and then this is Jabari Rice talking about his heel injury, which he did play through in this one. He said, I'm about 70%. I play fast and I play hard, so it's hard to crash the boards. 
and get rebounds and stuff like that when I can't go 100%. I'm just working on different ways I can help my team get the win other than doing what I do best. Um, gutsy performance by Rice to go out there and, you know, not just go out there and be a guy at, at half speed or anything. He was he was leading the way, you know, so impressive performance by him, really impressive performance by the whole Aggies um, and what really was a bit of a statement game, you know, to win in that fashion. So good stuff there. Um, Friday and Saturday will be New Mexico State at Seattle. Um, we're going to rewatch those games on Monday and Tuesday like we always do. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Mountain Time for each of those uh, Aggie Rewind episodes. So make sure to stay tuned and watch those with me. I hope you guys join me for that. But in the meantime, we also have some more content. Tomorrow on lcsunnews.com, we are going to have the Sun News Spotlight article, which is going to be on Evan Gilliard, breaking down his film from the season, talking about everything he brings to the table. Um, really good stuff that will come out at noon tomorrow, more or less, at about 12. Um, and then at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, Tomorrow we will have the straight shooter episode where we're going to recap this Cal Baptist game, just get my running takeaways from it, um, predictions for the rest of the matchups around the WAC this week, and then, of course, a preview of the Seattle series. So a whole lot of content coming your guys' way. I hope that you all check it out. If you enjoyed this live stream, please leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and turn on that post notification bell. I appreciate it because it really does help this channel grow, guys. But thank you so much for tuning in. I think that is all that we got. Um, so we're going to wrap this one up. This has been Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jada Sports Dude. And I'm out.